Okay, here we go. So, it, oh no, no. Hold on, wait a minute. I thought I was finished. I am not ready. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm doing way too much. My life is booked and busy and I'm not feeling it anymore because who, who told you that this was okay, Janelle? Who told you that this was okay? This is not okay. Okay, in the words of Bryson Tiller, I'm back and I'm better. When I be doing what I be doing on this channel, please know, okay? Because <laughs> I don't need y'all seeing too much. But listen, look at the little sticky note. Can you see it? Oh. It looks a little funny. Hold on. Why? You see that? Yeah. I, when I be writing, please believe me when I say I be writing. I'm a very like, I just tweeted this a couple some time ago. I don't know if it was a day, a week, a month ago. Because time surely does not work with me anymore. I posted something saying like, if I don't write in my planner every day, I'm going to light this world up. My attitude is gonna be so out of this world. People are gonna think that I'm not from here. I'm not, I'm not from here. You know, actually, I was not from, I'm not from the United States. I was born in Germany. Conversation for another day. Listen, y'all, it's your girl. <laughs> like, I didn't even do the intro. I just sat down, face looks so shiny. Don't mind the blemishes, my face is beat enough for me. When my life is set up, I have never been a makeup girly, only for special, 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 special occasions. For this here YouTube channel, you will see it in the vlogs. You will see it in the blogs. Vlogs and blogs. Couldn't think of nothing else to rhyme with that. I'm not feeling my rap girly self right now. Woke up feeling kind of icky. That's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. Anyway, I will be vlogging this women's international event that my cousin invited me to. And he's also going to be tagging along. Really, it's for women, but he decided that if he's gonna go, a woman's gotta go. So shout out to him for inviting me and let me know. Bar. <laughs> Excited about that. My face might be beat to the gods. It might not. It depends on how I'm feeling. It depends on what my hair, how my hair turns out. Lately, I, I just, I have not been feeling skirts and, and dresses. I haven't, I don't know why. I don't know why, don't judge me okay I've been feeling the need to like be dressed in preparation of being attacked because I'm only 5'4 okay it may not seem like I'm that short but once my daughter stood up next to me and she put her head on my shoulder and she was able to actually just lean over and put her head on my shoulder I knew then in that moment that I'm a very short woman and I'm not growing anymore I'm stopping this is where this is this is where I, I this is it for me. Got to the point where I can fit my daughter's jackets. I can fit her shoes. Can't fit her pants, cause I'm... <clears throat> okay. I can fit her hats, whatever she got, it's mine. And vice versa. But anyway, y'all not here for all that. Y'all know y'all not. Y'all ain't gotta tell me that you not. I know you not. Hey y'all, Sugar Nelly D, and we about to be like Nike and what? And what? Man, what? We about to be like Nike and what? Just do it. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so on my sticky note, I put Castlevania and Inuyasha, but I'm gonna be real deal honest with you. If I start talking about Inuyasha, this video is gonna be about an hour long. And I'm not gonna do all that because my daughter is gonna be coming home soon. And I'm hungry. And I got something I gotta do. So, and that's another thing too, with these reviews, I was thinking, should I do four at a time? Like, did you guys like the four? I saw that out of all the videos I posted, within a short amount of time, that video got the most views and the most likes. And for me, that's crazy because I literally stopped doing YouTube like <laughs> uh, almost a year ago. Like I picked it up, put it down, picked it up, Put it down, pick 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 it down, pick it down, pick it down. I literally just, life was just really crazy for me to be completely honest with you. The support, never there. The the drive, never there. The excitement, up and down, up and down all around. And on top of that, I'm a home mom. So my goal in life really is to give my daughter everything that I didn't have. And on top of that, teach her everything that I didn't know. And really and truly let that nepotism show. Bars! <laughs> Anyways, 
it's it's so much more to it and I can go about it later in life to encourage people out there who pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down because it's real. It's not just about dropping it because you've, you know, lost your edge, you lost your spark. It's like, no, life really be life and for people. How in the world do you make yourself relatable to the masses when you can't even figure yourself out in this current moment? How do you make content for people to get them through the day when you can't even get through the day? I am about to preach a whole sermon. And I'm not MLK. The point that I'm getting to, <laughs> the point that I'm getting to is life be life in. And from this moment forth, even if it's about absolutely nothing, I'm going to post a video. I'm going to be consistent with YouTube this year. Why? Because we're gonna be like Nike and what? Ugh, just do it. Let's get into it. Basically, the title is what the video is gonna be about, except the little tidbits that I just went over. We are going to talk about some animes that I recently just watched, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of review. I'm only gonna do two this video because I feel like that was the longest, quickest, that was the longest, quickest review that you all got to see in the first review or whatever. And I'm a filmmaker, so I love to review things just because it gives me the push to either dive into that genre or just continue to look at it because it gives me that nostalgic feeling. And I like to disappear from the world. And the only way I can do that is watch something that gives me that feeling, you know? Castlevania is number one. The reason why Castlevania is number one is because there's one thing that I love. I love when there's like a super powerful, I don't even know if we wanna say that this character is a protagonist or an antagonist because he was just chilling. What is he? Is he a protagonist or is he an antagonist? I really don't know. I didn't know that Castlevania was a whole game. Had no idea about that. Basically, I guess they follow the video game Castlevania um, and made it into an animated series. And Vlad Tepish, I had to look up the name because I didn't want to say it wrong, but Vlad Tepish, Dracula, Vlad Dracula, Tepish. That's the, the fact that your middle name is. Now on, when I start getting approached by a guy, I need to know his middle name because if your middle name is Dracula, and my mans was just chilling in the middle of nowhere with skulls on, on, what are those things? What are those pointy things called? What are those pointy things called? just chilling in the middle of nowhere in his fancy castle and at some point gets interrupted in the midst of his glorious um, loneliness because honestly, was he really lonely? No, he was enjoying just being alone, which I can relate to that wholeheartedly. He gets approached by a woman named Lisa. Then Lisa's like basically not even afraid of this guy. She's like knocking on the door, kind of, you know, understanding the situation that she's in because she's before she approaches the door she sees heads you know on these sharp pointy things and she's walking up to the door and she's like doop 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 listen I heard that you're Dracula I heard that you know signs miracles and wonders and I need to be a part of that because I'm smart I want to heal people I want to get these people all the way together and Dracula's like uh, Lisa's literally just going on and on about how she knows that he knows things and she want to know the things that he knows and then Dracula's like hold on wait a minute do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? And she's like, First of all, you didn't even offer me some water. Do you always talk to women like this? I said, This girl got some heavy mascarunas. How you gonna talk to Dracula like that? You ain't afraid and fear for your life? I like you. This girl said, I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> So anyway, this girl ends up becoming Dracula's wife because, you know, she said, I laugh in the face of danger. Who are you, Dracula? If you was gonna eat me, you would have already done it. As soon as I walked through the door, I'm not afraid of you, let's go. I got hands hey. and I know how to run them. Full years, days, however much time that goes by, she ends up getting caught by some bishops and I guess people of the church 
um, that's in the village and they're like, you're practicing witchcraft. What are you doing? You're healing people with what? What is that? That's witchcraft. All because they, did, they could not understand what the heck she was doing. They see her mixing stuff. They go into her lab and they see all these little trinkets and devices and they're like, babe, you are a witch. You're about to go on the stake. And the whole time that's like, dang, like she just out here healing people. She ain't bothering nobody. She ain't causing no mass destruction. And y'all really about to just set it off. Now here's where it gets really interesting and where my heart flickers a little bit because I love it. I don't know why, call me nasty, call me dangerous, call me scary, Mary, I don't care. Absolutely love it. When a man is just chilling, minding his own business, okay? Minding it, mind you. And y'all literally set him on fire by messing with something that he loves. Something, someone, whomever. Y'all mess with it. And he was just chilling. It's like a man with a toy. Like he's just enjoying life in his own little corner. And then you poke him, he turns around and he sets the world ablaze. I love it. I don't know why. I just absolutely love it. They end up, you know, the bishops, the church members are like, yeah, put her on the stake, bro. And she's like, please, you don't, please don't, don't do this. You don't, you don't want to do this because if you do this, it's going to get really ugly. It's going to get scary. And I promise you, boo boo, you're not going to like what happens next. Don't do this babe I need you to travel I need you to be like these people that I'm helping I need you to travel the world I need you to really understand how men are and he's like Ugh. so anyway he travels the world and he's doing what she's basically asking him to do so he decides to come back home he's looking for her he visits the place where she does all her medicine work this lady that's there she's like they're gonna put her on a stake <laughs> they're gonna put her on the stake for helping me for healing us all she ever did was heal us she didn't do nothing she didn't cause no problems you know what Vlad was getting ready to do right Vlad was like my wife is gonna be where she's gonna be on the stake she's gonna be on the stake she's gonna be on the stake they're gonna put her on the stake are you her husband yes I am <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can guess what happens next. So Vlad's like, all right, they gonna put my wife on the stake all because she wanted to help these people. She literally just wanted to heal y'all. That's it. I see the games you guys wanna play. So then, of course, what happens next? She's burning on the stake, she's screaming, ah, ah, it hurts, ah. Vlad shows up in the fire that she's being burned in. He shows up in the fire. You're not hearing me. He sh shows up in the fire that she's burned in. And he's like, Really? Really? This is what y'all doing to my wife? Barbecuing. This is what we're doing? We're having a nice, good old little barbecue, huh? Hmm? You know who I am? Do you know who I am? And then, of course, we all know what happens next. If you watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you didn't watch the show. Glad literally tells them you all got a year to disappear you got a year to make things right with your lord and savior the one that you calling out to right now to let this woman die on the stake you're praising this god and he is okay with you burning an innocent woman yeah you got a year to deal with that baby and i promise you that year is gonna be the longest year of your life because you think i'm gonna forget but i am worse than a woman score you understand i'm glad I'm Vlad Dracula Tepish. What do you think this was? Bet. Time moves on. He gets his lick back. That's right. We all know what happens. Everybody knows, right? We know. What does he do? He gets his lick back. Yeah! That's right. If you know what I'm talking about, it's because you watch the show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you didn't watch the show. Vlad gets his lick back. So we have Belmont, Trevor Belmont, Belmont Trevor, Trevor Belmont of the Belmont clan. Dracula is now getting his lick back by setting the world ablaze. He's just setting out these night creatures. There's tearing people up. I have to warn you right here, right now, they show these people getting tore up by these creatures. When I say they getting tore up, I mean like you're going to see the gore. You're going to see it's disgusting. It's foul. I was not prepared. I was not ready. There's also another scene towards the end of the season of the towards the end of the show that involves uh the son of dracula and i'm gonna be honest which i'm gonna be real dude, i was not expecting it it is nasty again viewer discretion is advised as dracula and his legion of vampires prepare to rid the world of humanity's stain the belmont is no longer alone and him and his 
He and his misfit comrades race to find a way to save mankind from the grief maddening Dracula. Dracula is now hurting, right? He just lost his wife. He lost the one thing that made sense to him after dealing with people for how many decades, centuries, he's been alive for how long? And the one person that made sense to him is taken from him. I can't imagine. I could not imagine. And the worst thing is she wasn't taken away because of a disease or because he had to kill her because she was doing too much. It's like, no, you all took her from me. Hum humanity, humankind. I let y'all live. I let y'all have babies. I let y'all do whatever y'all want to do. Just leave my wife alone. Y'all couldn't even follow that one simple rule. I have to admit something. I finished um, Castlevania. Um, ooh, my hands is ashy. I finished Castlevania about a month ago. So I might say her name wrong, but I think her name is Saifa. Okay, yeah, so I had it right. I had to Google it just to make sure. Okay, so basically there is a group of speakers that were saved by Trevor Belmont because he just decided to come through out of nowhere. And they were being, they were being bullied and ridiculed by the church people of this region, the specific region. And they're basically like, listen, you all, you know, you all started this mess and we're just trying to help. We're just here. We're, we feel that there is, um, we feel that there is a savior that is hidden like 20 feet, 2,100 feet below us. And we need to find who, where he is because he's going to be the thing that saves us from Dracula and his disgraceful behavior. Everyone's like, no, 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 we not hear nothing that you're saying. If anything, you speakers are the problem y'all probably the reason why dracula's attacking us and he's like no we're literally trying to find the solution even if we were the problem we're still trying to find the solution and they're like no i not hearing none of that shut up you're talking too much one of the speakers tells trevor which he runs into the speakers and he's like listen my granddaughter she's down there trying to find the savior can you please go get her i don't know what happened to her she hasn't came back we're looking for her we'll leave but we got to get her and he's like fine i'll go save her and after that you speakers need to leave up out of here because they're going to kill you these people in this village do not care about speakers they literally loathe you people they don't believe that you all are who you say you are it's time to go and they're like we will leave just get my granddaughter when trevor found her she was covered in stone yikes she got attacked by a monster that you know turned her into stone so trevor's like here let me fight this monster you know da 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 da, da boom bow pow boom bow pow pow bow <laughs> beast this monster she unhardens and then he's like oh i'm over here thinking you know that you're gonna be ugly. You're actually pretty beautiful. But he doesn't say that. I could just tell the way he looks at her. Like, boy, you was feeling her as soon as you saw her. You nasty. Speaker ends up traveling with Trevor because she feels like she's destined for more. And she's like, listen, I'm trying to tell you there is someone down here. And if we do not find this person, we're going to be continuously dealing with Dracula's maddening destruction. Like, it doesn't matter what you say. I believe it for sure. Like, it's written in the books. It's written in the ages. And you're a Belmont. So I feel like you know, you understand what I'm talking about. He's like, I don't care what you're talking about, sis. We got to go. We should just be leaving. So then at some point, they run into Adrian Tepish, who is Dracula's fine son. That's right. Lisa and Dracula got their freaky deaky on and decided to make a little baby. Adrian Tepish, also known as Alucard, and Saifa and Trevor travel together to f find a way to completely shut this maddening catastrophe down. At one point, one of the female, um, one of the female vampires who was not a fan of Dracula's behavior was like, we need organization. I'm t sick and tired of being around men who do not know what they want. And, or I'm sick and tired of being around men who have no direction. They have no guidance. Apparently she was a human. And then she ended up being transformed into a vampire by a man who, who kind of sort of acted just like Dracula. There might be some false true narrative to that. But as time progresses, we find out that she was not a really nice person to begin with anyway, which I kind of understand. Like if I was a female vampire and I was dealing with all that maddening stuff and I got to be a part of the court with Dracula and how they're going to completely just take over humankind all because his wife got killed, I would be asking the same questions that she asked. At some point she asked like, why did you just turn her? You kept her as a little pet. You kept your wife as a little pet. You kept her as a human. Why didn't you just turn her so that she could not be attacked by these people and killed by these people? Granted, 
it doesn't necessarily mean that she wouldn't have died. It just means that she would have been killing people and then now she wouldn't be able to, Lisa probably would have had to stop her profession because if she had to kill people to survive, if she was turned into a vampire, that kind of defeats the purpose of her healing people. I don't know. It sounds like a conundrum within itself. That's why the show was really good to me to watch from the get go. Overall, the show was really, really good. It, it, there's a lot of highs and lows. There's a lot of ups and downs. I will say it gets freaky deaky towards the end. Dracula, unfortunately, spoiler alert, Dracula, unfortunately, he does die. Yes, he does. His son kills him. And in a sad way, it's like, dang, like you are only like this because you lost the love of your life. Like, how do you, how do you process that? How do you get to that point where you're like, nothing is going to make me feel better. Nothing at all. Unless you bring my wife back. And no one's like, I'm thinking to myself, like, maybe there's a solution to bring her back. Like, why you gotta kill all these people? Like, there's kids that's dying. Some part, in some part of the show, people literally just get scrambled like eggs. Let me write. Oh my god. Like, Dracula. Oh my god. Vlad, Vlad, is it really that serious? Like, sir, you mean to tell me that you really are that upset? Which I get it. It was your wife, but Vlad, there's not another way. Like, I don't know. I give it five stars, 10 out of 10. I liked it and I'm sure you'll love it and want more of it. The next one, at first I didn't want to do it, but I'm going to do it because some people, um, some people like to be petty and say, oh, all females love Inyasha, they're for showing up. Inyasha, it's a ultimate favorite. It's a show that I will rewatch probably two to three times a year. Don't judge me, judge your mommy. Bar. <laughs> I love that show, not because of the lovey-dovey fantasy type of feelings that it gives me, but I love the show because the way it ends, it's almost like you can just start it all the way back from the very beginning. It's like it's a very nostalgic feeling that I get from this show. To be completely honest with you, it's also a show that I can watch and literally feel like I was in the show. I don't even know how to explain it. That's why when people say, oh, females, oh, females love Indriyaja, like, try. Okay, then. Anything, you would think twice about liking the show too so that you can get close to a female that you like. I'm just saying, I just dropped free game, baby. You wanna talk to a woman and you know she like Inuyasha, you better put that thing on on the first uh, Netflix and chill night that y'all get. I'm not gonna guarantee anything's gonna happen. There's a disclaimer somewhere in the bottom. You'll see it somewhere. I'm not gonna guarantee that anything's gonna happen. I'm just gonna say that you're gonna set the mood right. That's all I got to say about that. Shit is an ultimate favorite for me because it's just, it's, it, 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 it. You're a victim. Mm. Here we go, CSI. In all seriousness, there's four movies that, that goes along with the show. Like, Inuyasha is one of those shows that got me through middle school, got me through high school, got me through childbirth, it got me through the toddler phase. I don't know why, but it just did. Whenever I feel like I need balance or some type of, um, some type of steadiness, some type of co consistency in my life, I will put on Inuyasha because the show was just that good. I love the plot, I love the twists, I love the climax, I love everything in and out about the show. I love that Moroku is who he is. I love Shippo, I love everybody. I love Inuyasha, I, love, I cannot stand Kagome. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Kagome. I love her, I feel for her, but she be getting on my nerves sometimes. But then again, I'm like, you know what, it's the show, Janelle, it's the show, but see, you see how I'm invested into the characters? That's why I love the show, because the show within itself draws you in so much that you are now invested in these characters. That's the goal of the of, of the show. Filmmakers, when we write, when we edit, that is our dream, is to make sure that people are drawn into whatever it is that they're going to watch. Kyo Kikyo Kikyo. I should be doing the review and I'm not. I'm just talking about how much I love this show, which probably should make you want to watch it because when I say I can't stand Kikyo, if you watch it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you didn't watch it. Kikyo is the worst. So basically Inuyasha is a half demon going through life, trying to figure out what to do with this life. And next thing you know, he finds a woman who's a human. She's a priestess, tries to have this discipline-like behavior as a priestess because they're held at a very high standard in the feudal era. And so she's basically trying her very best to just maintain that. Somebody puts a curse on her and they're like, if you fall in love with somebody, you're going to die. And it's, I think her name is Subaki. Subaki's an evil little witch, honestly. She puts this curse on her and then she's like, great, now I'm gonna die because this priest has just put a, uh, a curse on me. How cute is that? Meanwhile, in the background, 
Kikyo was constantly going to this cave to take care of this guy named Onigumo who was a bandit and she's like you know I feel bad for him so I'm gonna take care of him whole time he's like lusting after Kikyo he likes her he loves her and he wants more of her and he's nasty for Kikyo and he's basically like I wish I had my body the things I would do to you you nasty dog you nasty dog but Onigumo you know stuck in this cave at some point he gets sick and tired of being there he gets sick and tired of seeing Kikyo feeding him soup and then leaving he's like nah I want them cheeks and I want them now giving his life over to demons and I want to say a spider crawled like at some point a spider crawled on his chest and then basically it's like listen we'll give you mobility if you give us your soul so next thing you know Onigumo and all these hundreds of demons gathered together and here comes Naraku. Naraku is nothing compared to Shigaraki. I'm sorry I was gonna put that in there. Y'all know I'm in love with Shigaraki now. If you don't know. If you didn't watch the show. If you know what I'm talking about because you did watch the show. But listen baby listen to me when I tell you this. Shigaraki will always have my support in anything. Anything that he does. Okay. You know why? because Shigaraki literally was handed the worst deck of cards. Shigaraki wanted to be a hero, wanted to be a hero, and they took that away from him, okay? So I'm st I stand 10 toes for Shigaraki, you understand? Sorry, my eyebrow feels weird. But with Shigaraki being the way he is, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, Naraku really is nothing compared to Shigaraki. <laughs> like if there's one thing that I love is comparing villains, Shigaraki literally, <laughs> I take that back. Naraku, when it comes to being super, evil when it comes to being super evil i want to say all for one all for one definitely passes them to up because honestly he purposely did so many different things you take all might's predecessor's grandson and literally bring them up under you and you know which unfortunately because of the way his family was and because of the predecessor Shigaraki's grandmother okay is really the at fault for all of that but I'm not going to go into my hero because the newer season is getting ready to start there's a movie that's coming out and I'm gonna be honest with you I haven't watched any of the movies yet I know I know please don't hold it against me my life is literally everywhere and anywhere all at once I will say that Inuyasha is a 10 out of 10 five stars because there are seven seasons of it there's four movies of it and literally it's about a love triangle between Inuyasha Kagome and Kikyo and how Naraku all this time genuinely just wanted friends but didn't know how to ask for them. Around using people like Sango's brother Kohaku. Gave Moroku's father a curse called the wind tunnel in his hand. At some point I want to say, I don't even know how Shippo got involved. I don't remember if you know what I'm talking about. It's because you watched the show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you didn't watch the show. All the more reason for me to rewatch it. <laughs> I didn't need a reason. I was going to do it anyway. The show is worth the watch because they find out so many things about people that was affected by the jewel shards. So basically Kagome, I didn't even say that part, but again, I'm not gonna tell you the show, I'm just giving you a, re a review because you need to go watch the show because then you'll know what I'm talking about. But Kagome basically comes, Kagome is a reincarnation of Kikyo, right? So Kikyo is like this fine priestess and she ends up getting hurt by Inuyasha because of Naraku. Naraku transforms into Kikyo, then he transforms into Inuyasha and tricks those two into thinking that, you know, I'm about to hurt you, I don't like you. The whole time that was Naraku. So they ended up fighting and then the jewel shard becomes defiled. The whole point of Naraku doing everything that he does is to continue to defile the jewel shard because there's like this battle between um, this long living priestess, I forgot what her name is, don't judge me, but her soul is locked into this jewel shard and so are the other demons that she's fighting so it's like there's a constant battle in the jewel shard between light and dark. Naraku's goal is to make the jewel shard as dark as possible so that he can completely absorb it and become a full-fledged demon. Overall the show is like I said it's really really great it's one of those shows that just the plot the storyline the climax the protagonist the antagonist everything is lined up to a t you can literally relate to everybody and, and, and anybody in the show honestly Naraku's the only person that's like the worst because his whole reason for acting out the way he did I can't believe this picture was on the floor. I'm sorry, I just, my thought just got interrupted. My daughter, look at this, you see this beautiful picture of us? Ta-da, aren't we pretty? She looks just like her mommy. I made a beautiful child, I know. 
biggest takeaway from Inuyasha is the fact that Naraku is like point blank evil. Like Naraku is, an, he's an, a jerk because he literally sets up like so many people to either kill them, to kill each other. He sets up people to go against each other. I mean, even he tried to get like Sashomaru, Inuyasha's older brother with his fine self. He tries to get him to kill Inuyasha and, and Sashomaru is like, you cannot, I've always wanted to do this. Like you're trying to use me. I'll play along, but the whole time I'm not gonna really kill my brother ever. Like you think I'm going to, but I like to play that game with him because I'm stronger than him. But what difference does it make if I'm stronger than him? Because that means I can kill him. So I'll just play this game of, I'm gonna try to, but I never will. It's like playing with my food, duh. I really be trying to play people the whole time. They all came together and tore you up at the very end. I will say, cause y'all know I love me some J-pop, K-pop, mm, yes. All of the songs from Inuyasha, or at least 85, 95% of the songs, intros and outros is on my phone. I wanna say I have the soundtrack to the background music to like Naraku's song. Naraku, like every time Naraku came into the scene or every time the scene was panning to Naraku, I have that song on my phone or the intro or the instrumental, I mean, every instrumental that leads up to each moment, whether it's like Kikyo getting ready to come in, uh, Kagome being upset, or a moment between Inuyasha and Kagome, I have all of those songs on my own. Next anime reviews I'm probably gonna do is either The Ice Guy and his cool colleague, I think that's what it's called, don't quote me on that. Also a show on Amazon Prime Video and it's, it starts with a K, but it's like a bed and breakfast for spirits. Don't know how to pronounce it. Might do Noragami next, I don't know. Depends on how I'm feeling, either way it goes. That's all I got for y'all. I'm tired, I'm hungry. I'm starving like Marvin. Castlevania and Inuyasha. Those are the two shows that I've watched. Inuyasha, obviously I re-watched, but I wanted to do a review because some people have never seen the show or heard of the show. You never know. Honestly, it could be a first for a lot of other people, so don't discount it. I would strongly suggest that you watch it. It's a very feel-good show. It's a show that you can re-watch a million times, and there's movies. If I'm not mistaken, all four movies should be on Netflix because I just watched one the other weekend. Y'all feeling good? Y'all feeling all right? Like it, love it, and one more of it. Make sure you hit that like button. Apparently the like button, when you say like this video, it should like light up or something. I don't know if that's something that everybody gets, but I saw that when I was watching, I think Rico the Giant, I was watching his videos because you know, Corey, where are you? That's okay, take, your, take all the time you need. Cause listen, I'm a video editor at heart, baby. I understand that this life is not easy. You ain't even gotta explain yourself. But I was watching Rico the Giant when he said like the video, the like button lit up. I was like, you lying, you serious? Yeah. Make sure you guys hit that like button. If you want more reviews, please subscribe to this channel. This is the Nelly Drayton Show where creatives gather to go beyond. You may see a podcast episode. You may see a visual podcast episode. You may see special episodes on the podcast show. You might see me playing games because I've been wanting to play games for so long. I just haven't had the time, but the time is starting to become available. So you're going to see me do it here soon. Hope you guys liked it, loved it, and want more of it. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm.